Hello colleagues, um, I'm going to try to put together a series of videos to talk about how we use uh, formula questions and other types of more advanced questions inside of Canvas. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the past uh, several months working on this and making sure I have a pretty good understanding of it. Obviously I'm not perfect, but uh, I've put together most of my tests to be able to have question banks that it pulls a lot of different questions from, or if it's not pulling a lot of questions, the question it is pulling makes up new numbers for each student. And so there's different levels you can do that at. You can do kind of basic stuff, there's a little more advanced if you want to control significant figures and things like that, or if you really want to go whole hog, you can do spreadsheets and things like that. And I'll show you how I do that. I won't show you every way. I don't use Respondus. I actually use other tools to do that kind of stuff for me. So I'm going to start off at a very basic level. I'm just going to show how to use formula questions within Canvas, and formula questions just allow you to have variables with different numbers in them. So I keep all of my test banks and other things inside one of my sandboxes. I verified with IT that sandboxes will not be deleted, they will never go away. And so the nice thing about using a sandbox is it's always kind of there and available to you and you don't have to go searching for it as much and all of my test banks for all of my courses are kind of in one place so it's a little bit easier to organize. There is something you have to do to make sure that test bank is available in your other courses but I'll show you that as time goes on. I don't have any sort of um, prompt or plan for this so if I'm doing things and I don't quite get it all let me know. So this is a sandbox for my test banks. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quiz real quick and what we're going to call this is a new quiz. It's thinking about it. And I'm going to use classic quizzes for all this kind of stuff. Most of these features are also available in new quizzes, but new quizzes has a couple limitations that I don't like. One is you can't use Proctorio or other things in it. And the second is my very advanced stuff where I use spreadsheets and get it in there. You can't do that in new quizzes. You actually have to put it into old quizzes, export it, and then import it into new quizzes, and it's just too much work. So I'm going to call this using formula questions number one. And go ahead, this is just and this is just a practice quiz. I'm not putting it inside any test banks for now, so I'm not going to worry about the rest of these. I'm going to go over here to questions, and I'm just going to do a new question. And you're more probably familiar with writing multiple choice questions. You'd say, you know, what is the answer to 2 times 2? And of course, you'd have your different answers, which is 4, and that's the correct answer, and you might put other things there. But what if we wanted to change it so that every student got a different number? Some students got what is 2 times 2, some students got what is 2 times 3, some students got 2 times 4. And the formula questions allow you to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up here to what's called a formula question, which is right here. And so I click there. And not much changes. Your prompts here is the same. It puts some information up here. This need help button is actually really useful. If you want to do anything a little more complicated, there's some help in there that helps you do that. But we're going to stay pretty darn simple. So instead of saying what is the answer to 2 times 2, let's say we just wanted to vary one of those. We always wanted to test a student's ability to multiply by 2, but we wanted to test their ability to multiply by 2 by 3, 2 by 4, 2 by 5. And so what we're going to do is instead of saying what is the answer to 2 by 2, we're going to put in a variable in the second one. And how you put in variables in formula questions is you put them in square brackets. Now you can call the variable anything you want. You can call it A, B, C, D, that's great, but I also encourage you to think about using variable names that mean something. So 2 times multiplier. And the reason is, is if I click out of this, you'll see immediately it filled down this bottom part on the screen. Now unfortunately, apparently you can't see my cursor. It filled out this bottom part on the screen with multiplier as my variable, right, right there, and <clears throat> 1 and 10, so that you can, and those are the ranges of the variable multiplier. Now, I don't want students to multiply 2 by 1, I want them to be able to multiply from 2 by 2 to 2 by 9. And so now, you hit this recompute button over here, it keeps putting in different numbers right here. Uh, let me see if I can highlight that. Putting in different numbers right there where I have it in blue. Let me actually even blow this up a little more so it's bigger for you. Okay, so there we go. And what that is, is those are all the different possible combinations that it can come up with. So some students will get what is 2 times 7, and then you can re hit recompute, some students will get 2 by 2. This recompute becomes useful later when we actually have a formula in here because it'll show us the results of that formula so we can kind of check to make sure 
we typed our formula incorrectly. Decimal places. This is where Canvas sucks. Quite honestly, they don't care about sig figs. So you can specify one decimal place, but let's say that last decimal point ends up as uh, zero, which, there we go. What Canvas does is it says, well, 7.0, that's just zero, or that's just seven, and so it truncates it, and it'll even truncate it when it displays it to the student. So you have to be very careful about how you use these numbers if you care about the significant figures in your problem. Another difficulty is you cannot specify in formula questions to, for the system to care about significant figures in the answer. There's a little bit we can do for um, the answers to, to try and help with that, but you can't say, hey, make sure the students report this to three significant figures. That's just not possible. Um, so that is a limitation, which I will show you how to get around in a more advanced video. So anyway, I'm gonna go from two to nine, and then down here in the formula definition part is where you put the formula that Canvas should use to calculate the correct answer. And the formula is two times multiplier. And you'll notice that I did not put brackets around multiplier. So when I had the multiplier here uh, up top, I put brackets around it. But when I had it on the bottom, I did not put brackets around it. So make sure you're doing that. You hit save. What actually I always, always, always do, especially for more complicated formulas, is I select all and copy it. Right? You can right click and, and copy or whatever. I copy it because if you make a mistake in it, you can't just edit your existing formula. You have to retype it in from scratch. So if you didn't copy it, you have to retype everything in, which is chance for more errors. So I always copy it before I hit save. And there we go. 2 times 8.5 is 17. Now we can also specify decimal places in the answer. And you again see, since it's a whole number, it doesn't matter what I specify for decimals here, but if I start to get more decimals in my number up here, then the decimals here start to matter as well. But I'm going to stay with whole numbers for now, and that 2 times 3, right, that's my number right there, 2 times 3 is 6, and if you hit recompute, it shows you the answer for those different possible values, so you can kind of check your work. So great, we have a formula here, it says two time multiplier, and then what Canvas has you do, and I don't particularly like that it does this, because it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to me, is say, how many different combinations should I make up? And you're limited to those. Whatever Canvas makes up now is what your students will be choosing from, or what will be chosen from for your students. You can't go back and say, oh, later, you know, I, I really want more questions than that. So I always pick a, a reasonably large number here. There's no reason not to. Uh, so I pick usually at least 50, if not 100 different possible combinations. So let's just go ahead and do 50 different combinations. The error margin is a very important part. It's how close do your students have to be in order to get the problem right. If you specify an error of zero, they have to get it exactly right. Now in the cases of these whole numbers, that's actually probably fine, because they're, they're, you know, if, if they get the 2 times 7 is 15, they're, they're definitely wrong. But for things with decimal points, like I said, you cannot, cannot, cannot tell Canvas to care about significant figures. And so there, you can see you can, some of the things I've used in the past, is you can specify, oh, I want it to match within 0.02, I want it to match within 0.002. But if you have a wide range of variable um, values, maybe 0.002 isn't, isn't quite right, because you know, it, it will work for some values, but it won't work for the others. So you can also specify percentages. You can say, oh, they just need to be within 1% or 1.5%. What I found works really well for me is to do about 1.5 to 2.5%, depending on how much I think there's going to be students rounding errors and things like that. So about 1.5%, 2.5% um, is what I generally put in there, unless I know very specifically that my students should be able to get it better, in which case I'll put in very specific numbers. So when you hit generate, it sets there and generates a bunch of different combinations for you. The nice thing about this one is you can now scroll through and see all the different combinations it's generating. Here, since we had such limited numbers, right, it's repeating five and five and five over and over again. But when you have wider ranges of possible values, it won't repeat near as much. And so you can see that the answer, you know, two times five is 10 plus or minus 1.5%. And then I can update that question. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. And we're going to go ahead and preview our test here. The quiz instruction says, what is 2 times 6? And if I keep editing, 
I can save or cancel again here, and I can preview again, and I probably will get a different number, which is what is 2 times 5. So you can see that each student is getting a different possible answer. And so I can hit 10 here, submit, and it saved it. And uh, how did I do? I got the answer correct. Okay. So that's how we use very basic formula questions. That was with a single variable. We'll talk about how to use multiple variables, which is very, very similar, and also how to control significant figures in a later video. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, let me know, and I'll make some more. If it's not very helpful, I won't do it. Thanks.